Well, the first thing to do is to wish you Gunji Fat Chai. Uh, because it's Imlek. The Lunar or Chinese New Year. And I was wishing you Happy New Year in what I think is Hakka. So yeah, Chinese New Year. I thought I'd do something a bit different. And that is, do your Chinese horoscope. So with it being the New Year, it's the New Year on February the 1st. And it's the Year of the Tiger. And it lasts until January the 31st, the following year. Now that date does change a little, just slightly. And that's important. Because you are the sign of the monkey. And to find out what your sign is, you can look below. But clearly, if you're born in a January, you fall into the previous year's sign. Uh, but if you're at the end of January, and because it changes because of the lunar calendar, then it gets more complicated. And you can look it up, but uh, it's you'll, you'll have to do a search on it because it's a little bit more complicated. So yeah, I'm going to do a reading for the sign of the monkey, for the year of the tiger. It's something a bit different. And um, monkeys, I hope you enjoy it. Now I'll be using probably two decks, but out of three decks. So the first deck is Tarot Nusantara. The second deck is the Steampunk deck. And the third deck is the Light Visions Tarot. Um, Taro Nusantara is actually a new one to me, which, which I love. Whereas the Light Visions, um, I've struggled with uh, as a result of the rendering. Um, although I, I think I'll grow into it, I, I will keep using it and coming back to it. You can see on all of them, I'm using quite a lot of uh, salt. And that's to clear the energy and the spirits from them. Something that I do fairly regularly with my Taro. And I also, you'll see a number of gym at there that I use um, just to bring a good energy to the tarot um, and to my reading. And I call on the Chinese spirits to assist me in shuffling the cards, in selecting the right cards and interpret them for monkeys during the year of the tiger. Monkeys, do you know, I, I don't feel so daft calling you monkeys as I did calling tigers tigers don't know why uh, of course I'm of an age to remember the American well I say the American Davy Jones was from uh, Manchester but the the American sort of manufactured pop group the monkeys and they were manufactured to compete with the Beatles um, and they used to have a, a TV show that was on after school as we got home from school in England. And we used to love it. We used to absolutely love it. I mean, it, it was completely manufactured. But some of their tunes were quite nice. You know, Day, Day, Daydream Believer. Um, yeah, some of them were quite good. You know, it was funny. I mean, they weren't the Beatles, were they? They weren't. But, yeah, I remember them. So, anyway... I will call you monkeys without even a smirk on my face. Yeah. A year of two halves almost. That's how it's feeling. Or maybe not. Maybe not. No. Well. <coughs> the overall theme. You look at that central card. You're hanging around. You're waiting for something to happen. In the past you needed to move on from something. To dump some baggage move on to new shores your current energy you're going in search of something probably money could be could be career but you know it's something to do with wealth you're going in search of it but in the future you're looking at more formal structures possibly even formal religion uh, the energy impacting on the out is the King of Cups. Now, the King of Cups mm -hmm. is... Um, he's a jovial. He's, he's, he's a king that everybody likes. But I wonder if that exposes you to being manipulated because of... The card that could prevent the outcome is the Five of Pentacles, which is the card of poverty. Poverty or no mates. 
And the outcome, I mean, there's no good or bad cards in tarot. Other tarot readers will tell you this. And, you know, it's because every tarot card has both good and bad in it. And this card, I, I would see as, as an absolutely neutral card. Um, because it's the Eight of Cups. It's you walking away from something. Now, you might, it's disillusionment for sure. So you might see that as a bad sign. But if it's something you've got to walk away from, and I've got the very strong feeling that you do, it's it's a good thing to be doing. It's a good thing to be doing. But why were you disillusioned? So as I say, um, an interesting looking reading here, monkeys, and we're going to have to get deeper into it. So this central card, this hanged man, this is an energy that runs throughout the entire reading, throughout every other energy that I pick up on this is the overriding energy and this is you hanging around you might be scanning the environment you might be looking at what's happening you might even be planning something but there's bugger all you can do because you're hung there upside down now you might have chosen to do that you might feel that now is the time not to show your hand just to wait quietly in the background plan something because maybe you don't understand the environment. I mean, how many of us really understand what's going on in the world now? So maybe not a bad thing to be doing. Or maybe this has been forced upon you. Maybe like me, you've... Well, I've been unable to leave the island of Java now for two years. Not even been allowed, been able to go to Bali. Now, of course, politicians would argue with me if I'd done... You know, but, I mean, frankly, it's been impossible for me. And as far as going to the UK to visit my 91-year-old mother, you know, just forget it. Uh, yes, it may have been possible on a number of occasions, but had something gone wrong, the consequences for me could have been completely disastrous. The risk was too much to take. So maybe that's, maybe that's what's happening to you. Maybe that's what it is, that you're just hanging around, you know, because you've got to. Or maybe you're hanging around because you feel you've got to. But that runs through everything. And as I say, it's it's not necessarily a bad energy. It's it's just an energy. It's an energy of hanging around. You might be fed up with it, though. Like I am of being in Java. Nice island, though it is. Nice island, though it is. But, but I used to survive by going to Bali twice a year. And that hasn't happened for two years. And I used to go and visit my mum once a year. And that hasn't happened for two years. You know, so, yeah, you know, it's... Um, am I bitter? Of course I bloody am. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. It's, it's just one of those things, isn't it? Now, your current energy is the... Oh, is it one, two, three, four... Six of, six of swords. Uh, this is about you moving on. Oh, sorry, this is the previous energy. So, in the past, you needed to move on from something. Uh, now, we, we, we don't know what it is, but I wonder if this thing that you had to move on from, and you should be dumping the baggage, I'm wondering if you didn't, because there are some signs in this that other people are influencing you. I'm wondering if you didn't fully dump the baggage that you're expected to. You look there, they're moving, are they moving across a lake from one side to the other? So it's a moving on, moving somewhere different. And I think you've achieved that. But what you didn't was throw the baggage that you've got in that boat overboard into the lake. I, I, I just get the feeling you've not done it. I might be wrong. I might be completely wrong. Um... And we'll find out a bit later. But that's how it's feeling to me at this moment in time, monkeys. And the next card, which this is your current energy, monkeys, is the Page of Coins. Uh, this is, well, you know, the, the last card was about moving on. And as I'm saying, I think you have moved on, but you've not dumped the baggage. And this is about you, a desire for change, a desire to move on. Possibly, or almost certainly, to do with money. Maybe going out looking for money. Maybe looking for a job. Maybe looking for a business. And there's a degree of uh, joy in doing it. You know, you're happy in doing it. But you recognise that it's a new start. Success isn't guaranteed. But, you know, 
I think you're pleased to be on the other side of that lake, you know, with this fresh shot. You're looking forward to it. And you see he's he's dressed rather nicely. It might be a bit hot for him. Might be a bit parched. But full of hope. You know, full of hope, monkeys. Yeah. Now we have the Hierophant. So this is your future energy. Now, I almost always interpret this as you turn into formal religion. And I think I'm correct in this circumstance. The reason I see it that way is the, the Bahasa on it. It, it, it. it talks about a Gama, which does mean religion. And if you look at the card, well, it, it, I mean, it's, it's ecumenical, yes, but he's definitely some sort of a guru imparting a religion on his, on his acolytes, if you like, there. So, yeah, yeah. It, it feels to me it is about religion. Uh, what I'm remiss in doing, Monk, is, is I always ought to say it could be about sort of more learning more conservative formal ways of doing things. Ah, ah, well, it could be that, couldn't it? Because we've had the page of pentacles, you going out looking for money, and maybe this is saying, well, you know, there are tried and tested ways of doing this. Maybe you shouldn't reject them. Maybe you should do it that way. I don't know if that's what it's telling us. At all. It could be. It could be. So maybe it's not. Maybe I'm right. It's not about religion this time, even though I've, I've got this strong feeling it was. Mm. Mm. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. It's getting interesting, isn't it, monkeys? Now, the card impacting on the outcome is the Queen of Cups. Now, she's a queen very much understanding her emotions, understanding the emotions of others, somebody who's in control of her emotions, very much in control, somebody that's loved by everyone, maybe somebody that gets taken advantage of. If you haven't dumped the baggage, is this indicative of you still thinking about it? And you see, we look at her, and she's on a throne, dressed in a grandeur, her cup, which is love, emotions, in her hand. But she's down, down on the seashore, as though she's trying to command the sea like King Canute. Now, I'll let you into a secret. We can command the tides, but it doesn't half take some doing. Doesn't half take some doing. And she's a very powerful queen, and I think even she has to at times give in to nature. Is that relevant? It could be. It could be. Letting go, letting go of the baggage you've not already got let go of, that could be very important. That could be very important, couldn't it, monkeys? Mm. And now we have the Five of Pentacles. This is the energy that would prevent the outcome. Now, I never like to see this card, you know, and as I say, people will tell you there's no good and bad cards. And, and you know, there is hope in this card, but it's not a card I like to see. Because it's a card of poverty. It could be a card of no mates. And you look at it, they're walking there. He's, he's, on, he's on crutches, um, they, they don't have money, do they? For sure, they don't have money. Uh, the hope is they're walking past a chapel and there's a beautiful light coming out of that window. The other hope is it's only a minor arcana, so it shouldn't last. And I suppose the final hope is it's more about an attitude of mind, monkeys, uh, than it is maybe an actuality. What I don't really understand is why it's cropping up here. And, of course, there was the page of coins, starting maybe new business ventures, new jobs, and maybe that doesn't work out, and that's what this is telling us. But I somehow don't feel that that's what this reading's about. I mean, it could be, you know, the, the uh, Six of Swords could be you moving on to a new job, a new business. The page, you, you, you start in it or looking for it. And as I say, this card could be it not working out. It's, it's possible. 
it's possible, but then it doesn't square really with the next card. No, I, I think it's about this baggage that you've not effectively dumped. And if you don't dump this baggage, then somehow it's going to affect your finances and your friends. Now, you might be saying, what on earth does he mean here? But I, I was I was abused by a narcissistic psychopath for 20 years. And, uh, well, I mean, I put seven, well, it's 10,000 kilometres between us. Um, and, and waved goodbye to my friends in the UK, knowing that they'd be poisoned by her. And I left her with as much money as I possibly could. A long story why, but I, I left with as much money as I could. And subsequently, she used my son to take what spare other little spare cash I left myself with. So, you know, I, I am feeling alone and in poverty. And that is directly as a result of not having fully dumped that narcissist. So, I mean, it could be that. It could be that. Let, let's, let's move on. Because the outcome is the eight of pentacles, and although it's a disillusionment, although it's a walking away, I do see it as a fairly good card. And now you're walking away from eight cups of wine. So you know what you're walking away from, but the tide is coming in and maybe we'll wash all of that away. And you're walking up a mountain, which isn't going to be easy. And you're walking towards the moon, so you're walking towards the unknown. But whatever it is, it's affected you so much, monkeys, that you want to do this. And, and I see it as a good move. Now, could it be that you did start a business, start a new job, and it's not working out, and you're walking away? But why would the poverty... Oh, I see, I see. You, The poverty card would mean that you feel you can't give up the job because of you've got to pay the rent, the mortgage, whatever. Could be that, couldn't it? This That would make sense. But I think it's still about this dumping the baggage. I think finally you're dumping the baggage that you need to dump. That's my feeling about it. But I, I, I think, monkeys, we need some real clarification on this. I do, because of, well, you know, it's okay to interpret it a, a couple of different ways. You know, that, that's fine. But I'd like some more clarification. I really would. Do you know... I, I think I want two lots of clarification. First of all, on that Five of Pentacles, the poverty card. And secondly, on this ending, this Eight of, eight of Cups, the, um, the Disillusionment card. And the cards that we have, first of all, on the um, Five of Pentacles is the Hierophant. So this is suggesting to me that it's about religion. It is suggesting it's about religion. Then we have the page of wands. Well, we've had a page before, which is you seeking something. This is you wanting some action. Wanting to do something. And then we have the ten of swords, which is a bitter ending, a betrayal. You get betrayed. Mm. Moving on to the... Eight of Cups. The first card we have is the Chariot. Now that makes absolute sense. That's you in control, getting a bit between your teeth and moving on. The next card we have is the Queen of Swords, which is about you putting up barriers. Hey, it's coming, it's coming, isn't it? You get in there. And now we have, is that an eight? I think it's an eight. Uh, or it could be a seven, is it? Uh, it's eight of wands, you know. Very much like the chariot card. This is you getting your views all in all a line, all your ducks in a row, moving in one direction with a great deal of pace. So it's you realising something, isn't it? Let's look at each card individually, but I think we've got there, haven't we, monkeys? I think I think it's quite clear now. So we have this hierophant card here. Do you know what? Do 
Do you know what it's it's saying to me? Because remember, this is about the poverty card. I think the person who's tricked you is somebody, the person who's betrayed you, the person who you should have dumped the baggage from, is somebody that you looked up to in a religious or spiritual way. You were looking up to a higher event. And it's they who betrayed you. And now, I have to say, I mean, I'm 63 years old. And some of the biggest betrayals I've ever had in my life were by people who took every opportunity possible to lecture others on religion and morals. When I was in business, I always used to say that if somebody said, I run my business on Christian principles, Run a mile, because you're about to get shafted. And I think this is what it's telling us. If not, it's certainly telling us that you get disillusioned with religion. But no, I, I think somebody you trusted, who you thought, was so, was so honest and pure because they were so religious, and, and probably thumped and quoted the Bible. And it's they who betrayed you. And it's they who sent you, could, could send you into poverty. That poverty feeling. And, and it's happened to me. It's happened to me very recently. Very recently. Fortunately, I didn't really have the same religious beliefs as this person. But if I did, I think it would have severely shaken my religion. Severely. Yeah. And yeah, you see, we've got this page of wands, which is about you going out and seeking something, seeking adventure, seeking something new. Oh, yeah, of course, you know, we had that, we had that, um, in the past, we got the six of swords, that's you moving across that lake to something new, this is, this is... An innocent action. You're going across the lake thinking that thinking that things will change on the other side of the lake. But what you don't realise is that it's, it's this religious connection where the problem lies. Now, I'm not saying you've got to ba abandon your religion. But what I am saying to you is that there is somebody that's you hiding, hiding under a religion. They're a narcissist. They're a narcissist and they're hiding under religion. You know, I mean, they may even be within a religious hierarchy because let's face it, hierarchies attract narcissists. So they could be a priest, they could be a pastor, they could be a TV evangelist, they could be a paustad, they could be, I can't, well, anyway, whatever you call um, people within your religion. They could be somebody that's important in your religion. Guru, guru. And they're hiding under the fact that they're a guru to betray others. Yeah. And you look at the card. I mean, she's so innocent, isn't she? She's so innocent. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it could even... Could it even be paedophilic Catholic priests we're talking about, couldn't it? I'm not saying that Catholics are the only paedophiles, but you know. You know what I'm saying. Oh dear. Oh dear. And you know, the betrayal is going to be so bitter. So terribly bitter. So terribly hurtful. And everything will come to an abrupt end. Everything will come to an abrupt end. Yeah, you, you've trusted somebody, somebody religious. And they betray you. They stab you in the back. You look at that card. There he is lying there. Ten swords in his back. Lying on the top of a building in the city of London. Yeah. Yeah, so you're betrayed about money, aren't you? It is about money. You're betrayed about money. So, it's, so I'm probably wrong that it's a paedophile priest. But it is to do with religion. Somebody to do with religion. Somebody who probably preaches at others about doing the right thing and they stab you in the back. They do. Yeah.
Well, monkeys, this clarification isn't isn't the most uh, happy of clarifications. But what I have to say to you is that those were all about the five of pentacles, which is what might prevent the outcome. And uh, I think the five of pentacles doesn't even have to happen uh, because the clarification on the outcome, first of all, we have the chariot, um, and this chariot is, is you taking control of your life, taking control of things. So I think it is you finally dumping this influence. You're taking control, you're knowing where you're going, and you're going at a pace. And I think you're going at a pace away from that person. Yeah. See, we now have the Queen of Swords. I mean, she is a lovely queen. Uh, look at her, she, she's a beautiful queen, everybody loves her, everyone finds her charming, and she's holding onto a sword. What does that mean? Boundaries. Boundaries. You set boundaries, and don't let these buggers get, into, get in behind you. Don't let them. Just because they quote from the Bible, or they tell you this, or they tell you that, it's bullshit. You set boundaries. You say, no, I don't loan money to people. Don't do it. Particularly not people I don't really know that well. Whatever it is they want from you, whatever it is they're after from you, keep your boundaries firm. And do you know the biggest boundaries you can have are in your own mind? If you've already got those boundaries in your own mind, people don't even ask you. People don't even ask you. Yeah. You need to set boundaries because if people have been taking you for a ride and you didn't get rid of them, you thought you had by moving on, but you hadn't. And this is, yeah, set the boundaries and you'll be fine. And, you know, it's all fitting into place now because now we have the Eight of Wands, very similar to the Chariot. This is, this is moving very Getting your ducks in a row, knowing what you want, knowing your direction and going there very, very quickly indeed. And remember that this is confirming the Eight of Cups, you're moving away, your disillusionment. Yeah, you, you've seen through it. You've seen through it and you're moving on. And I, I think it's what you didn't see through in the past. So in the past, you had to, you had to, uh, you had to get to the other side of the lake but you didn't dump the baggage. But now you know you've got to dump the baggage. And of course, throughout the, throughout the year, the entire thing has been hanging around. You've been hanging around because you still hold on to this baggage. You've not been entirely certain. But now you are. Now you're absolutely certain. Now you're moving on. And good luck to you. Good luck to you, monkeys. You need to. I think we can summarise, don't you? The monkeys, uh, there's no sugar coat in it. I don't think 2022 is going to be, or sort of the year of the tiger, is going to be a wonderful year for you. But it is a year of learning, uh, learning from mistakes, learning from things that happen. And hopefully the next year will be better for you and this learning its roots go go back deeper in the past i believe there is somebody somebody that might be a part of a religious hierarchy certainly somebody that pretends to be very religious probably someone that lectures others on morals, doing the right thing, and religion. And they're an absolute snake. They're an absolute snake. They're after your money. They're after your money. And I think in the past you've had some sort of a run-in with them. And it caused you to move on, move on slightly. But what you didn't do was you didn't dump all of the baggage. <clears throat> now, what do I mean by that? Well, what I think I mean is that you realised that something was not quite right in your life. 
But I don't think he realised that it was this religious person. So maybe you, you moved from one town to another, but you still kept going to the same church. Or, you know, it's that sort of a thing. You moved on, but you didn't fully move on, really. And this year is a year, this year of the tiger is you hanging around because you, you still, you do have your suspicions. You do have your suspicions, but you don't want to believe it because of, you know, here's somebody that seems so good. Preaches to others about doing the right thing. And they're an absolute snake. And, you know, you, you've moved on somewhat. I, I think you've, yeah, you've probably got a new job or a new business or something like that. But always in the background is this sort of religion, this sort of spiritual thing. It's always there in the background. And um, they're, playing on, they're playing on the fact that you're a good person. You, you are a good person, monkeys. You know, it's not you. You're a good person. You're probably an empath. They're playing on that. They're playing on your desire to do the right thing. They're playing on your desire to be good religiously. But, you know, they, 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 they will betray you. Given, given the chance, they will take your money and stab you in the back. But, do you know, I think, monkeys, all this hanging around and thinking, you've realised. And you set up boundaries... So they can't harm you anymore. And you end up moving away from them with such vigour. You, you move away from them. You know, you, you get the bit between your teeth and you want absolutely nothing to do with them. Now, I hope it doesn't destroy your religious beliefs. I hope it doesn't do that. I hope you don't... You know, the, the truth is you get narcissists rise to the top, whatever organisation... So if this is a priest or a pastor or a, a, a ustad or whatever it is, uh, don't think it's the religion that's wrong. It's, you know, it's, yeah. Narcissists rise to the top wherever. So an important lesson that I think you've had to learn, monkeys, an important lesson. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed Tarot from Java as an addition to my channel, The Magic of Java. Please take a look at the other, the other uh, videos that I have on this channel about Magic from Java. And I hope that you will be, become a subscriber. Now, if you want to find, hear your next tarot reading, hit the button and that will inform you of when I publish new, um, new readings. I'm certainly going to do a reading for every month, but maybe I will try them a bit more frequently, say a mid-month reading, and maybe also some special readings. But above all, thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you, and enjoy Java. <laughs>